Okay. And uh, um, what was your least favourite aircraft to test? Well, I think without any question, the general aircraft at 38, um, which was a tailless experimental glider and had two vicious characteristics. It um, was very difficult on takeoff because it had drooped wings and these formed a uh, pad under, of air underneath them on takeoff, <coughs> which got the aircraft off the ground quickly. But once you got clear of that pad, the aircraft just dived straight back into the ground and uh, you had to be very much on the ball to catch it. And then when it was in the air, if you tried to stall it, it um, in the normal fashion, when the stick was being pulled back and you were increasing the angle of attack, you would suddenly find the, the stick would come hard back into your stomach, nothing you could do to stop it, and uh, you would go into a tail slide. And a tail slide is a highly dangerous thing because you never know what the outcome will be. The only thing to do is sit tight, don't mess around with the controls and pray. And um, the interesting thing was I flew it about 19 times and that was, the reason for that was we only had 19 flight observers in uh, Farnborough at the time and none of them would fly w with me in twice in this particular aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever refused to fly an aircraft yourself on the grounds that you, you looked at it and thought oh, no, it's too no, never, no, no, no. I, I reckon um, usually an aircraft before it reaches Farnborough has been through the hands of a company test pilot. This was not the case in the the general aircraft aircraft I've just described to you. But normally speaking, sure they may have had big troubles with it and often that's the reason it came to Farnborough. But that was our, our job, to be um, really to, uh, to deal with difficult aircraft. And what, what, what uh, aircraft have surprised you the most on being the opposite of how, of how you perhaps imagined it would handle? Well, the, one of the big disappointing aircraft um, was, because it looked utterly beautiful, was the Westland Whirlwind. It looked absolutely right to fly, and unfortunately it didn't live up to the saying that if it looks good, it flies good, because this was not the case. It was underpowered, with Rolls-Royce Pelicans, it should have had Rolls-Royce Merlins, but you couldn't do that as a post modification because the weight of the Merlin was would have made the center of gra put the center of gravity outside limits. So um, that was a great disappointment. Okay, outside of the miles at M52, uh, are there any other aircraft you wanted to fly but never got the chance? Oh yes, the. Um, the North American um, X-15. I tried to get permission from the United States to fly this aircraft and uh, I had all the qualifications they agreed but the one qualification I didn't have I wasn't a US citizen and that was necessary and I wasn't prepared to change. <laughs> um. What, what modern aircraft now uh, that are either in service or in development uh, do you look at today and think, oh, I, I wouldn't mind flying one of those? X-35. Yes, I've been over and flown the simulator and um, I think it's a great prospect, this aircraft. The problem with it is the price is escalating rapidly, uh, more rapidly than the development, I fear. But um, when we get there, it should be a real winner. Um, fly by wire and glass cockpits were in their infancy when you retired. Um, do you think some pilots now are in danger of losing their basic flying skills? I think they're all in danger of losing their flying skills with UAVs over the horizon. <laughs> and I mean, the boys are going to be the pilots of the future, 
are the young guys that play model games and everything. They're going to be sitting there in the Pentagon or over here somewhere in uh, some hidden source and flying these aircraft over Afghanistan or wherever. And they're going to be the young pilots of the future. It's not going to be as an exciting a life, I don't think, as we had, but, uh, well, you can't have it all, can you? <laughs> well, that leads on to my next question, which is, um, you know, what would you say to young people considering a, a career in aerospace? Um, they might look at your amazing records, they might say, you know, I'm never going to fly as many aircraft as, as, as you. Um, what do you think would be the real challenge that would inspire young people into it? Well, I think they should uh, sort of pattern their dreams on, on realism and think to themselves, well, the chances of going that way are no longer there. So go for um, something exciting, uh, as, as exciting as there is nowadays. And I would say that the possibility of flying corporate jets, uh, because some of them are going to be supersonic, um, that's one way to go. The other way, of course, is into airlines. Uh, and um, to recommend a youngster to join the services, now I would always say that you're going to win some wonderful things t to your character if you go into the services. It'll mold your character for you but you may not get the sort of excitement that was available in my time. <laughs> um, uh, well, next question really is uh, just uh, two more questions. Um, a lot of people look up to you as uh, an aviation hero, um, but who was your aviation hero or inspiration when you were starting out? Oh, my inspiration was largely Ernst Udet, who was probably the most famous aerobatic pilot in the world in the mid-30s. He was a German, of course, and, and um, he was an, a total extrovert, easy to get on with, and uh, a likable guy. But um, he had a, a sad end. He committed suicide because the Germans really pushed him into being a desk technical, well he was the technical um, director of in the, uh, airman, in the German Air Ministry and he was totally out of his depth in a desk job. Um, so he I think was my main inspiration at that time. Okay. Uh, my final question really is, is uh, about the Royal Aeronautical Society. You've, you've been a president, you regularly uh, come and, and give lectures there. What does the Royal Aeronautical Society mean to you? Well, I joined it because the personalities who ran the society in my day were usually the heads of all the aircraft manufacturing companies. And uh, you couldn't get into higher company than this. Um, and um, so this was the attraction and also I realized that the lectures were full of information and at my age I was just keen to learn and this was the best place to learn uh, if you like the academic side of flying and um, a much um, it was much talked about the practical side too but of course the practical side was um, here at REE so the, the REE and the uh, Ham for Hamilton Place, where, which was this headquarters of all aeronautical science. Perfect combination for a young man who was keen to advance his, if you like, his aeronautical uh, know how. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Thanks. Pleasure. Great pleasure.